Hi, it's Andy from Real Handy Productions. We've been renovating our kitchen. We've used Stone Coat Epoxy that we got from StoneCoatCountertops.com. We're going to give you a link down in the description to their website and also to some instructional videos that Mike has put together showing you how to use his product to achieve a range of results. Now, this is the results that we achieved. This is the first time we've used this product. We've got this amazing glassy finish on our kitchen bench top uh, with this sort of granified look to it. It's, it's quite amazing. It's uh, obviously one of a kind. And um, we did it ourselves. An amazing amount of satisfaction gained from that. And, um, yeah, we're so happy with it. So what we wanted to do was show you just some differences in some of the products we had to use in conjunction with the Stone Coat. Mike mentions a lot of products that are available in the US, but since we're in Australia, we had to find comparable ones here. So I'm going to go through that now. G'day. I just wanted to say a bit about the um, products we've used here. In Mike's videos, he gets all this stuff, obviously, locally. Uh, some of the products he mentions, I can't find in Australia. Uh, so I'm just going to let you know what we use locally for this sort of stuff. I'll start just with the wood. Obviously, the wood you can get anywhere. It's MDF, right? Um, for the holes we patched in, we had to get 18 mil of MDF. Um, but we could only find a 12 and a 6. So I got a 12 and a 6 and we laminated them together. And um, that's what became our countertop there. And I just uh, stuck another piece of 12 underneath to support it all and just did heaps of screws, countersunk the heads, and then stuck filler over the top. These drop edges we got um, by simply by attaching some MDF that was really cheap. This um, MDF moulding here, you can see the profile, it's just round edge. That was about 64 mil wide. Uh, we wanted it 50 because that's how big our existing drop edge was. So um, I just cut them on a rip saw, just fed them in, put the rip saw actually upside down, made a table out of it and just fed this through. Um, Bunnings will probably cut this for you if you get it from there. And this was like incredibly cheap. It was about $6 for a five metre length. Uh, I needed six metres, unfortunately, so I had to get two. But I've got heaps of spare. Okay. So we stuck all them on. And then, of course, countersunk all the screws. Screws, uh, glue. Um, I just used like liquid nails to stick them on um, because I'm screwing them as well. Uh, I thought, you know, there's no need to go whole hog. But all the little gaps, um, the little gaps where the uh, formica had a little bevel in the edge, and then obviously over the screw heads, uh, we filled up with car filler, just bog that you fill up uh, dents in your car with. Um, we couldn't find Bondo. I mean, you can get it from Amazon, but I don't know how long it would be to wait for it. I only needed a little bit. Super Cheap Auto had this. So this, is, again, is a two-part. It's got a hardener. It's probably a bit of overkill, um, but it did the job pretty well. Okay, and then um, and Helga spent a lot of time sanding that. <laughs> um, sanding it flat. Uh, we used a 240 or 260, uh, a finer grade to sand that flat after we'd roughened up the, the Formica with an 80 grit. And this is the undercoat that we could get from Bunnings that seemed to be pretty good. It's um, undercoat, primer, sealer, stain blocker, you know, it slices, it dices, it does all the stuff. And this says here that it's fine on uh, ceramic tile, for mica, uh, even fiberglass. So, you know, that's, that's pretty good. And it seems to do a pretty good job. It comes out 
like it's like it's marshmallow it's incredibly thick and then you just spread it really thin with a roller I've been using um, just a tiny little hundred mil roller uh, with a foam cover and um, again these are just from Bunnings they were pretty cheap too and they work really really well and the good thing is you can just chuck these foam rollers away afterwards okay so this is tintable right we probably should have tinted it uh, but didn't think about it at the time and found this anyway Bunnings occasionally has colors that they mix up for people and then the people go oh no that's not the right color uh, so they try and sell them off for cheap so I just got a, a, a liter of um, this is microband uh, by Taubman's uh, which we've painted all the rest of the walls and the ceiling and everything with just because it's mold resistant and it's a good paint to work with so I just thought oh yeah we'll get this that's a light grey you can probably not really tell it's a light grey there but up against the white you can see it's a light grey so that's what we're going to do now so this is what our kitchen looked like beforehand a bit of a 70s throwback so we're, um, well, Helga there is hard at work demolishing all the bits and bobs. Uh, under the sink, not too pretty either. Uh, we're going to fix all of that up uh, as part of this process. We're not actually giving ourselves new cupboards or new cabinets. We're just fixing up what exists. So there's some MDF that I've stuck in under the edges of the existing sinkhole. That was a big double sink with a drainer on either side and we just wanted to reclaim some uh, bench space so we're using a sink that's not so wide here you can see the drop edges that we put on again that was MDF molding and uh, that will give yeah just that little bull nose to the counter so that uh, the stone coat will flow over the edges a lot nicer and it just gives the whole thing a bit more of a modern look having those round edges so um, yeah as I said we're not going to use Bondo um, because we didn't want to wait uh, we're using the auto filler that's going to go in soon but first we're just going to prep the top of the counters uh, so that's just screwed straight on um, and now we're going to sand with 80 grit emery cloth uh, just on that little orbital sander there and um, that did the job of just uh, giving a bit of tooth over the laminate um, so that the undercoat would be able to stick really well uh, we also had to go over some of this MDF stuck up a little bit uh, so we got some of that down too that was a bit of work doing that but you know it was less than a millimetre probably less than half a millimetre we had to take off there so yeah just be wary with that your hands get really sore <laughs> from the vibrations okay so this is pretty much it uh, with that auto bog in um, we use the auto bog because it's really hard you know it's not like a um, like a, a gyp rock filling cement um, because it's got the two parts to it the hardener uh, but that sanded off we took off the high bits with some 80 and then sanded over everything with 240 uh, so it's pretty smooth I mean you know you can see it's not perfect there but um, the stone coat will hide many of these imperfections as long as they're slight um, so yeah that's the end result there and that's it with the first coat of that undercoat that um, that I showed you previously uh, it's it's turned out pretty good we only needed one coat of that undercoat it was um, like I said it came out like marshmallow it was so thick and uh, yeah we're pretty impressed with it at this stage uh, we can we can see the difference in the bench space we've actually reclaimed a lot of bench space by shortening both the sink area 
and the stove top area so this is uh, just the base coat basically uh, to get the color not so stark white and um, yeah we're going to spray over the top of that we've got the fire on because we're going to uh, get that stone coat epoxy ready and we want the temperature up it's actually winter even though we're in Australia we're in a really cold part and at winter it gets quite cold uh, so yeah we've masked up everything ready for the stone coat all the areas that um, that we don't want anything on we've covered and uh, now if you look at Mike's video he goes through this process of, of spraying and getting uh, a bit of texture onto the undercoat so it's not so stark and that's exactly what we're doing here uh, we're going through with a few colours we're starting with a sort of leathery brown there and just sort of randomly just misting that on we don't obviously want great big uh, lines of it we just want just a, a light mist to give it a bit more texture so uh, I think I've got some green here is that green I think it's green no. that was white no here we go that's white uh, but anyway yeah the other one was green I've done brown uh, leather brown sage green uh, sort of antique white it was off white and now this is a coat of black which I made very careful not to get too close just mist over otherwise it would be too stark of a contrast against the white so this is just providing more depth and texture to the whole thing I've got a um, pretty heavy duty face mask on doing this at the moment because uh, the spray paint fumes in the air were getting quite dramatic so yeah um, that's our main prep before mixing up the stone coat uh, now mixing up uh, we've just measured out uh, 900 mils of each which um, I believe is a quart a quart of part A um, and part B in this bucket and we're mixing them together with uh, a paint stirring accessory that we also got from Bunnings and uh, I'm not going to show you the full time that we mixed this um, we went nearly five minutes <laughs> with this uh, because we wanted to make sure it was really mixed because this is crucial to the whole process uh, we didn't want to stuff it up um, so we went quite gung-ho with this mixing right, it was a really good mixing stick that we used um, pretty happy with that and of course we'll be able to use that again now notice here the stone coat comes out white right that was a bit freaky at first I thought isn't it supposed to be clear uh, but um, yeah it goes clear <laughs> so uh, no need to be so concerned so basically we just plopped it out where it needed to be and um, left a little in the bucket um, because I wanted to have some left over for doing the edges so um, there's heaps stuck to the side there uh, I will scrape some of it out um, but yeah now we've got to mix it again once it's out on the countertop so uh, Mike used an eighth inch notch trowel we've of course got the metric system in Australia so I used a four millimeter notch trowel which is roughly the same size eighth of an inch is like 3.2 millimeters um, so yeah there's not much in it so yeah we just uh, swished this around and mixed it again within itself whilst it was on the bench here and uh, once we'd got it fairly well mixed like it is now in this section started to spread it out more towards the edges now 
I used probably the minimum amount of stone coat I could get away with on this. Uh, we were thinking of putting some more out, but it did did stretch, fortunately, the amount that we did. Uh, in retrospect, we should have used a bit more just to play it safe. Uh, but luckily we got away with the amount that we did. Okay. So, uh, once it's all spread out, you're left with all these lines in it um, from the notch trowel spreading it out. So, we didn't want them. So, uh, as Mike does in his videos, we went and uh, chopped it all in with this little chopping brush that we got. We made sure that uh, there weren't any loose hairs, just tugged at all the hairs. You can see the lines there. That's what we're getting rid of by this chopping process. And also with the brush, we just take, uh, just load it up and we take a bit of paint, uh, sorry, a bit of the stone coat and put it on the edge. You can see I'm sweating there, Helga's wiping my brow. It's really hot in there at the moment. The fire's like cooking us. Uh, yeah, we're also... See that tile backsplash there? It's got a lot of grout in it and uh, little tiles. So we're just putting a bit of stone coat on that too, just to provide a nice coherent surface on that that will just blend in with the countertop. Okay, so going around the edges. Uh, Mike's got heaps of videos covering this procedure uh, I'm just showing you just for coherence that obviously we did this stuff that um, that he mentions um, you can see there's heaps of bubbles from the chopping and all of that don't worry about that they'll go it's nothing to be concerned about at this stage uh, also the spray paint colors might seem a bit dramatic at the moment uh, again they too will be mellowed out by, by us adding the colour um, to the stone coat or um, more importantly adding the, um, the metallics now the metallics were the absolute winner with this I think that's what made the difference in our finish and made it so wonderful so now we're, we're at the point of actually adding a little bit of uh, spray paint into the stone coat itself Right, so this spray will actually be mobile with the stone coat, coat and blend in with the metallics we're going to put on and form part of the overall pattern as opposed to that undercoat that we've already done with the spray paint which is a bit of a more st static base. Right, so again I go through it with quite a few colours. Um, I know I used the uh, black again and the green and the brown and uh, I think I used a blue here a little bit as well uh, but it's all just misted and just very light uh, you couldn't really see it much I could only just see it I thought if I could actually properly see the colors that I'd done too much so I kept it very minimalist at this stage. Um, but uh, trying to work fairly quickly here because uh, although we've got it hot to keep the stone coat mobile for as long as possible, uh, this is my first attempt with it. So yeah, we, we didn't know <laughs> how much time we had. So here we are. So. Um, I've got two veins in the countertop, one over there that goes through the uh, cooktop and another one that goes in the in the most used area that we've got here and all I'm doing is getting some spray paint, putting it on the brush and dragging it through the stone coat. Now it looks pretty dodgy at this <laughs> stage doesn't it? Um, but don't worry, this converts into something amazing. So yeah, all I'm doing is spraying on the brush. I've dragged through silver. Uh, it was, I think it was an aluminium actually, it was called. And then I've got a, um, a deep green on there. And uh, here we go, here's like a sea blue. Uh, it's almost a navy, not quite. 
and we just pretty much just drag it through willy-nilly um, you know as you can see I'm not painting a masterpiece here there's no real um, artistic talent used here it's just spray a brush with some color and drag it through you know I wasn't going for it looking like that I was just like yep this will do and uh, <laughs> see these all naturally meld together later on in the piece and look a lot more natural than that and get this amazing organic texture uh, which looks a lot better than that so pretty much all you have to do is slap it down and the stone coat and the alcohol spray and the blowtorch we use later uh, just makes it into a work of art instead of uh, <laughs> <laughs> some sloppy paint <laughs> which it sort of looks like at the moment uh, but you'll see it um, you'll see it transform as the video goes on so chuck in some orange um, why not um, yeah all the colors add to give it depth I don't think you can really see much orange in the finished product that we've got you can see a lot of the metallics we used uh, but all of these colours that we put in just go towards giving the whole thing more depth. Okay, so just going over again, pretty much with the same colours, was just widening out that vein a little. Um, I think that was with just some black along the edges there. Yep, a bit of a blob of it on the edge there. I just remember when I go over the edge like that just to also paint it down the edge uh, so you know it looks like a coherent piece it doesn't just stop at the edge and then doesn't continue down so yeah looks pretty dodgy you know um, obviously it's not the finished product okay so here you see that that's what happens when you start spraying the alcohol so we've been spraying um, I think that was the clay color we got clay copper silver and black and uh, we've just mixed them with uh, a rubbing alcohol and put them in little spray bottles and sprayed them all over the joint so we did black pretty much all over the um, the surfaces that are, are clear as such that don't have the veins we did a lot of black on them and a little bit of silver and at this stage we've done a lot of silver in the vein and look how it comes out it's this incredible looking thing now now we're gonna put uh, more copper and clay in there later because uh, we, we're pretty much going to match our slate which you can see at various little points throughout now I'm just pushing this around and seeing what we can do with the blowtorch at the moment the blowtorch of course you use it to um, pop all the bubbles any air bubbles in the stone coat um, you go over with the blowtorch and it pops all of them obviously you've got to keep it keep it moving pretty quick but you can see how there how it's pushing apart the stone coat and changing how things are there uh, you can see that silver condensed a bit and uh, if there's any sort of little divots in the stone coat caused by the alcohol uh, the blowtorch also gets them out if they're relatively small so we've been going over it with that just at this stage just to see how it goes and uh, yeah we're pretty happy with that result remember how it looked like just <laughs> like what the heck are you doing to that countertop with that paintbrush uh, <laughs> now it looks a lot better than that sort of looks like an agate a mother of pearl um, it certainly looks much more natural see we've got a granite look there where the vein 
isn't and in that vein it's it's really quite incredible um, that's that's what the alcohol and the uh, the metallic fibers in it uh, fibers what <laughs> say fibers the metallics that, that are in that metallic powders uh, and just push it around a bit with this uh, blowtorch you can see it's looking pretty good there again we want we want more metallics in it um, to match the floor a bit more so uh, we're going to put the the gold uh, coppery colour and the clay colour in there as well but uh, that's how it's looking so far um, you know you could you could leave it there you can do whatever you want of course uh, if you're doing it yourself go for your own effects Mike's got heaps of videos showing different effects uh, we just like this particular one so followed his method for getting that so we did our other metallics. Sorry, I didn't have any video of that. Uh, and we've left it to dry uh, for a 24-hour period. Sanded it back lightly with um, some 240 grit emery cloth. And uh, now we're going to do our second coat, uh, which Mike refers to as a flood coat. And that's to cover up any imperfections that might be there in the colour coat and just to make the whole thing thicker and more protected. And um, yeah, we decided to do that uh, just because, you know, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Uh, so yeah, mixed up the stone coat, poured it on. Again, it was white, looked like we were pouring glue all over it, but we know it dried clear, so. Um, <laughs> weren't too uh, too worried about it so that's it after the flood coat uh, it's still wet at this stage we haven't taken the, the um, plastic off uh, we're going to take the plastic off just before it's it's fully dry for the bits that are along the edge that actually sort of dip a little into the stone coat so we can fall back and fill up those spots so that's that's our kitchen in the end okay so that's the process we went through with our stone coat countertop if you have any questions check out the description below we may have already answered it otherwise drop us a comment thank you very much have a good one